or I a ring and just let us know which of those four statements applies to you. We just need to know whether it's number one, number two, number three or number four um, and also whether you're able to offer your gifts and talents to help expand our, our team once we get back in church. So hopefully that's all self-explanatory um, in the letter. The PCC are meeting this Wednesday evening to kind of sign off the risk assessment for getting back into church and um, make some decisions about what the partner services will look like. So I would encourage you to pray for the PCC meeting this week and certainly on Wednesday evening to hold that meeting in your prayers too. At the end of our service this morning, for those of you on Zoom, we'll be operating the breakout rooms again, which is a chance to have a chat and catch up with each other in a way that we can't do whilst the service is going on. So if you'd like to be part of that, just stay around at the end of the um, broadcast this morning and you'll be placed into a breakout room. And after a short period of silence, as we prepare our hearts and minds to come before God, we will begin our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we say our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. And so we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray the collect, the prayer that the Church has for this week. Let us pray. 
almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 25. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Paddan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. So they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, First, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns. The thorns grew up and choked them. 
other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of living God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lunch is on Rishi, but we will all have to pick up the tab. Come dine with me. Rishi dishes up a £30 billion budget of hope. Just three of the newspaper headlines from the Daily Mail, Daily Telegraph and Daily Express on Thursday morning. For those of you who missed what happened on Wednesday, the Chancellor of the Exchequer delivered a summer statement focused on the economic changes that the government will make to tackle the fast accelerating financial impact from coronavirus. In amongst the many economic problems that experts predict lie ahead are business bankruptcies, furloughed staff finding that their jobs no longer exist, and mass unemployment. The changes announced were all designed to bring hope, stability and security into a volatile and unpredictable economic system, one which is shaping and moulding an uncertain and worrying future for many people. Hope, stability and security the three feelings that we are all capable of grounding our lives within, if only we would lock ourselves into the truth of the world that God created, sustains and continues to redeem. Perceive and hold on to the real truth of the reality that we all exist within, which is, by the way, far removed from our human created systems of economic and political power, and the feelings of hope, security and stability will follow as surely as night follows day. Our God, the God of the Bible, is a God who wants to lead human beings into a fuller life, one set free from earthly worries and concerns, a life of liberation, joyfulness and happiness. And how does God do this? Well, our God, the God of the Bible, is always a God who is doing something new, turning our expectations of what's possible on their head, instigating unexpected reversals so that God's people may taste the peace rooted in the hope, stability and security of God's reign. We discover something of how God works in our first passage this morning. We read that after a time of barrenness, God hears Isaac's prayer for his wife and allows Rebecca to give birth. New life, fresh possibility, a reimagined future crafted by God's loving hand. 
this new life springing up within Rebecca is not without problems, however, which leave her on the point of despair. In much the same way as Isaac brought his despair before God, so does Rebecca. She brings her distress to the Lord in prayer and receives a mysterious promise. She will have two sons who will become two nations. However, this divine promise contains an unexpected reversal, a twist that goes against all that we think we know about the, how the world works. Because Rebecca is told that the greater will serve the lesser, the strong will fall in behind the weak, that what appears unimportant will become the most important. Here, almost at the beginning of the Torah in the book of Genesis, is an image about how God works that reoccurs time and time and time again throughout the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, that God's entry into the world causes an overturning of human values. God's entry into the world brings about reversals in what people think is going to happen so that human life can be repatterned and can flourish. Let God bring your heart and mind into God's kingdom and find your life flooded with the hope of unbound possibility, the security of experiencing God's redeeming work and the stability to live your life in the freedom in which you were originally created. In amongst the economic changes announced on Wednesday was a stamp duty holiday on some house sales. By cutting stamp duty, it is hoped that the money saved by buyers will be channeled towards their deposits, thereby allowing house moves to be completed faster than planned, securing more people with the protection of their own homes. The act of being a home owner brings with it a fundamental change in how you see your place in the world, in how you experience life, and indeed in how you see yourself. For when you have a place of belonging, when you are rooted in a particular location, your foundations become shored up so that you can venture forth to explore the opportunities that every day provides, knowing that there is a place of safety waiting for you to return to. The sense of being lost, displaced and homeless, of living without hope, security and stability is pervasive in our world. So that the yearning to belong somewhere, to have a home, to be in a safe place is a deep and moving force in all of our lives. This struggle to find somewhere to belong isn't new, however. The Bible itself is primarily concerned with the very issue of being displaced and longing for a place of location, a place where you can ground yourself and live each day unburdened from the shackles of the world. Whether it is through the historical acts of God calling Israel to become God's people and leading them into the actual physical soils of the promised land, or through the many New Testament stories of people who recognised Jesus as Lord and found a home in the kingdom of God. What is clear is that being rooted in God transforms life so that the human yearnings for hope, security and stability are met. Within the parable of the sower, which is all about how God is actually up to another great reversal, we find out how we can find a home in God's kingdom, how we can root ourselves in a place which provides true hope, security and stability, something that the world we have created and sustained will never really be able to do. Sitting at the heart of Jesus's vision of the soils lies the way in which God is bringing into life God's kingdom. 
lies the truth that actually what God said God would always do, the drawing of God's people into the safety and security of having a home is happening right now, but not in the ways that you expected it to happen. Part of the point that Jesus is making is that God through Jesus is doing a new thing. God is doing something strange and different so you need to get on board with it by figuring out what type of soil you are. If the seed is being sown now in the word and deeds of Jesus, are you going to be the type of good soil that belongs to the kingdom and brings forth fruit or not? This vision of Jesus is of a sower going out to sow the word is deeply ingrained in the Bible. From Isaiah chapter 55 through to Jeremiah, the image of God restocking the land, starting the farm again, beginning from scratch when everything has gone wrong, returning God's chosen people from exile are all well-known Jewish images of how the kingdom would come to be known in people's lives. Isaiah chapter 55 says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. So resonating in the background is the expectation of the people that by now Jesus will be telling them how the kingdom will happen, of how when the kingdom comes, they will be set free from Roman occupation and that they will be told by God how to be his people, set free to find a home in a new world. This is the image that the people that were listening to Jesus have that in Jesus God is sowing the word of the kingdom but the teaching of Jesus through this parable of the soils doesn't conform to the people's expectations because this is a strange way in which God's kingdom announcement is working. You see living in God's kingdom is not simply going to be fulfilling all the dreams of all the people a kind of bonanza birthday party in which whatever you have wanted, God will give to you. Rather to have a home in God's kingdom and experience hope, security and stability demands choices, a deliberate and determined act of faith. Many people will hear the word of Jesus and will say, that's a nice dream, but it's not for me. Many people will hear the word of Jesus and say, that's really exciting. Where do we start? And then when the going gets tough, they don't want to be seen again. Others won't get going at all because the evil one, the accuser, the Satan, will deceive and distract and snatch the word away. This parable of the soils is also a vision of how the career of Jesus will start to pan out. Some people simply won't get him at all. They may have heard something, but the accuser snatches it away and turns them into accusers in return. This man is teaching against the law, teaching wicked things. This man says he is against the temple. This man is a false prophet. We see other people come to Jesus and give what, give what turns out to be a shallow, yes, we want to join you. But then after a while, they don't like it when Jesus tells them hard things about what it means to live in the kingdom. And so they fall away. We see others who will think it's a good idea to tie their lives to Jesus's, but then want to keep other conflicting bits in their lives as well. These things the cares of this age, not least money, come in and choke the seed so that it will be unfruitful. 
the human leaders of our world will tinker with economic policies and political strategies to try to bring, bring hope, security and stability into our lives. Many will try and convince us that what we see in this fallen world is the best that we can know. Many will try and seduce us to believe that life is all a matter of survival of the fittest, of grabbing what you can while you can. And yet our God, the God of the Bible, if we open our hearts and minds, will turn our expectations of what's possible on their head, will instigate unexpected reversals and will push out darkness with divine light. Hear the word of God. Let him plant his seed into the soil of your heart. Cultivate, till and attend to it. Don't allow your gaze to be taken from it and find your home, your place of belonging in the kingdom of God, a site where you will taste the wonder of divine peace being rooted in the hope, stability and security of God's reign, rather than in the fleeting chances and changes of the world we try and shape through economic policies and political strategies. Amen. We declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, make us fruitful in good works. Inspire, energize, and guide the attentive tilling of the soils of our hearts. Help us to share in your salvation and enjoy bringing in your harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all evangelists, preachers and pastors. We pray for those who have taught and for those who currently teach in Sunday schools and in Bible groups.
we remember all who go out to seek and save the lost. And we are sorry, Lord, for times when we stray away from you, when we are tempted to lose hope and attempt to find safety and security in the idols of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have unrewarding work to do. For all whose cries fall on stony ground. For all who labour but whose fulfilment is frustrated. For all who are choked by the cares and riches of the world. We remember all who have lost hope of growing or achieving anything. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, gracious Lord, to bring forth the fruit of your spirits in our homes. May our homes be places where love, joy and peace abound. May we nurture the young in age and faith, in the ways of truth and goodness. We pray for the homeless, for the displaced and evicted, for those who look in hope to have a home of their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy on all who have lost hope or vision. Protect all who are not at peace in themselves or at peace with those around them. We pray for all who are in sickness or adversity for all who are tempted to give up or unable to cope on their own. We pray for our friends and loved ones in sickness, especially this morning for the members of our community, for Peter and Angela Viner, for Mary Joyce Tolly for Jill Finney, for Jeremy Taylor, for Christopher, Roy and Pamela Peacock, for Sam and Natalie Jones, for Audrey Tranter, for David Johnson, for Norma Hayden, for Colin Millwood, for Josh Raffin, for Ian Moore, for Judy Taylor, for Joe and Ros Yates, for Rory McIntosh, for Elian Irvin Bowden, for Martin Aston, for Ruth Hardy, for Anna Scudamore, for Jonathan Bryan, for Noah Cantius, for Dennis Noakes, for the May family, the Rogerson family, for Dorothy Gibson, Melita Ling, Brian Drew, and Betty Shaw. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks that as you raised Christ from the dead, you will give life to our mortal bodies. We call into our minds all those who we have known and loved, who have gone ahead of us 
and now see you face to face. We pray for all who are renewed and refreshed in your eternal kingdom and pray that one day we may share with them in that glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all whose lives have been and will be affected by the economic impact of coronavirus. May those whose lives are overshadowed by uncertainty, insecurity and an absence of hope find all that they need in your merciful and loving deeds. We pray for all who are currently furloughed in our parish and in our church family that they may return to work without any changes. May your holy wisdom, Lord, support those who run businesses in your parish here so that, decision, so that the decisions they make may ensure economic viability and ethical trading. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, master of life-giving disruption, of truly unexpected reversals. As we attend to the seed of your word planted in our hearts, may its growth cause a necessary disruption and change in our lives so that our faith in you is without doubt or question. Help us to be examples of holiness in each other's lives so that we may inspire and help each other to remove all that restricts the growth of your word in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So with you. Let us offer one another uh, an electronic form of peace. <laughs> Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God bless. God bless, Paulie. Sorry. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. 
From the beginning, you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and all those who you love this day and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.